Hi all, I'm going to explain to you how to do this little problem I gave you on figuring out which of these three trees is the most parsimonious given these particular DNA sequence sites. So what I want to do is first start out with our first site, so site one, and I'm going to map this onto the tree. So what we see here is that almost all of these are the same, G, G, and G. So I'm not going to map those onto the tree. I'm going to just kind of assume that's the ancestral state. And instead, I'm going to look at number species one. So species one has an A instead. And so we can mark that here on the tree. And we can write G to A. And since I'm not really good at writing on my computer, in the next ones, I'm just going to either make the dash or write one of the letters. So all of these ones, two, three, and four, have a G at the site, but number one has an A at the site. So that's one change that we can see right there. All right, so let's do another one. Let's do number two. So number two, I'm gonna just change my color to red. So here's our site number two. And site number two is different. We don't have an odd man out, so one that's different from the rest. For site number two, we have two that are G and two that are A. And so the two that are G group together species one and two. So that's right here. So it's our species one and two. And then the two that are A group together three and four. Now, because it's even here, we can really decide on whatever state we want in the ancestor. So a G or an A, we don't have any other information. So I'm only gonna mark one of these changes on the tree. So the most parsimonious would be to assume that either A or G was the ancestral site or the ancestral sequence rather for site number two. And then there was a change in either group one, two or group three, four. So I'm gonna just do it for one, two, since it doesn't matter which, it's the exact same number of changes. So for one, two, we got a G. Now this is one that I wanna map on the other trees as well, just to show you where this would go on the other trees. So for this G to A that we saw in site one, that's going to be the same for all of them. And I can just put those on with little tick marks here. So one is always going to have a G to A relative to the rest of the tree. And then number two, though, it groups together one and two and three and four. So it, wherever we have a one and two group and a three and four group, that's just one change. But if they're separate from each other, then we have multiple changes. So here we have one grouped with three. So if our ancestral state is A, which we just kind of randomly decided, then that means group one is gonna get a change from G to A. Over on this side, we see group two with a G, but group four with an A. And so since we just decided randomly that A could be our ancestral state, just for now, we can map that G over there. So same deal here, we have one with four, they have different letters at site two. So that means that they're gonna to have to have a change between them. And two and three over here also have different letters at site two. So we're gonna put a little tag for a change there. Okay, so let's do one other easy one and I'll do this one in orange, so site three. So site three is an easy one because we again have just this sort of one odd man out, which is two. So we can assume that the ancestral sequence is C and for parsimony reasons. And then for species number two, they're always gonna have this change, the C to A change. So I'm just drawing out the C to A change right here for all of the species too. Okay, one more hard one. So let's look at, let's choose light purple here, site number four. So at site number four, we have another deal where we've got two, oops, sorry, I just messed up. This is another easy one. So, cause we have the odd man out. I meant to say site number five. I'll do site number four anyways, just so we can get it done. So site number four is gonna have a T as our odd man out for number three. So we just map this T as a change in the three lineage, not messing up with any other lineages. Okay, now as promised, one more tricky one. So this will be in green. So this is site number five. And so here we have another situation where we have two A's and two G's, so half and half. So again, we just can randomly decide which one we're gonna count as the ancestor because for this particular tree, we don't actually care about the ancestral sequence. We just care about the number of changes along each of the three trees. So we'll just say that the ancestral state was G. So why not? So we're gonna map on the changes to A's in one and three. 
So here we have one and three separate, so that means that they each had to undergo this change separately. Here we have one and three together, which means that they could have undergone this change here and both inherited that change. And here again, we have one and three separately, meaning that they would have had to inherit this change separately. So with these next two, you can do them yourself. These ones are pretty easy ones because we've already done them before. So we've got one with an odd man out and one with a 2-2 two -two pattern. And this 2-2 two -two pattern just happens to be the exact same kind of 2-2 two -two pattern that we saw for site two, where one and two have the same sequence and three and four have the same sequence. So this will follow the same pattern that we saw in site two. Okay, good luck with finishing this up.